Hey, Deserving Listeners, Darcy and Stacy. Let's watch. My name is Dr. Kirk Honda. I'm a therapist and a professor. Keep in mind that everything I say is completely speculative based on very little information that the show deems to show us and the cast members deem to present to us. So, you know, we're just speculating. Let's watch. Now I'm sorry to stop you, but you're very wrong right now. What? This guy. This is still going to be my best man. I'm, I'm just kind of confused. I'm okay, so suddenly the wedding, the rehearsal of the wedding, Florian says that Georgie is going to be the best man. From the look on Stacy's face, both Darcy and Stacy did not know this. I'm guessing that Stacy did know this, but I don't know. If she didn't, then clearly they need more sessions to work on their communication. <laughs> Florian and Stacy. Anyway, uh, one. Why would Georgie want to do this? Why would Florian want him to do this? Why did he want it? <laughs> I just... <laughs> and if truly Stacy and Darcy had no idea until this moment, and Florian's just sort of shoehorning this in, then the, 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 the amount of problems that are... I just imagine that, that given what they've been through, the violence that happened between Georgie and others, uh, I guess it was just Michael, but I, I don't know. I don't understand what is happening. I'm in honor, so I guess I was told Georgie was a guest, so I thought That's I was walking alone. What we all talked about. This is my best man. This is you need to walk with him. You like it, no like it. I'm sorry about that. That's how it works. Oh, yeah. So clearly, Florian has completely changed due to that very short meeting with the officiant. So everything's good now. <laughs> oh, boy. You know, when I'm sarcastic, then I'm starting to lose it. Um, all right, well, let's see what happens here. I decide to make Georgie my, the best man again. So Georgie like my closest friends and then kind of my family. And right now, I know Georgie like sleep with Darcy. For what reason I need to pray no more Darcy? Basically. Yeah, so I didn't know that was the reason, but Florian, his justification. So let's just walk ourselves through at least what's being shown to us on the TV show. Florian was friends with Georgie and wanted Georgie to be his best man. Okay, if we accept that as truth, then let's go with that. And he presents it to Stacy. Stacy says, I don't know about that. It seems like that might really bother Darcy. Florian kind of puts his foot down and he says, I don't have anyone else. I'm in a new country. I don't really know other people. Georgie's a good guy. I want him there. I don't have anyone else. You have all your people. Stacy gives in. And then Darcy is like, no, I don't like this. What's going on? Darcy has some phone conversation or some, some sort of... Anyway, eventually I think Darcy agrees or at least gives in. They have the bachelorette party. I'm sure I'm missing some details. I'm sorry, but... Uh, I'm just going off the top of my head. And then they have the bachelorette party, and then Georgie is being, I'm just going to say it, rapey with Darcy. Really, I, rapey is a good word for it. Like, really creepy, really invasive, really hands-on, really inappropriate, really just not okay. I'm jealous, and thus it justifies this. Then Michael comes. Michael was doing a great job dealing with it for the most part. And then Michael pushes it a little hard, but honestly, Georgie deserved it. Why Stacy and Florian didn't tell Georgie to go home? Why didn't Georgie just go home himself? I don't know. And then they have a fight, Michael and Georgie. It could be argued that Michael kind of started it by getting in his face, but Georgie probably pushed it over the edge. Anyway, then Florian's like, no, you're out of the wedding. There's nothing I can do. I mean, look what you did. You ruined everything which was understandable. Georgie says, okay, then now we're here. <laughs> and Florian's justification is, well, Darcy slept with him, so that justifies this entire thing. And also the fact that she slept with him means that I don't have to inform her about this. I mean, I didn't even know if Georgie, I didn't think Georgie was gonna be at the wedding. But anyway, so now, now, is it a big deal that Darcy has to walk down the aisle with Georgie? No, it's probably 15 seconds out of your life. It's not a hardship. <laughs> I'm sure Darcy can handle it. Now, Stacy's not saying anything. So I suspect 
Stacy and Florian knew about this? Because if this was a, a surprise to Stacy, I'm sure she would be raising a stink about this. So really, Darcy should have a problem with everyone there. Stacy for not telling her, Florian for not telling her, and Georgie for, because Georgie could have said so. Hey, just want to let you know, Florian asked me again, and I'm going to do it because I'm, I want to be, so I just want to give you a heads up. The day of the rehearsal, Darcy just figured, but again, it's not a huge hardship. Darcy should be able to handle it. Uh, although his behavior at the bachelorette party would give anyone justification to say, I don't want that guy touching me. I don't want him to be around me. Okay, Darcy doing behind our backs and acting like a, like a victim. Y'all want to discuss it. Yeah, I talked about this before, that this is a classic misogynistic, or at least a classic view of people's behavior that somehow, because she consented once, because she had a moment of weakness or a moment of vulnerability, she puts it and got together with him, then all bets are off. <laughs> Darcy doesn't deserve anything past that point. And so you get what you get, that kind of attitude. It could be misogynistic as well. It's just like, well, she shouldn't have given it up to him if she wanted to have any kind of boundary. She could have been vulnerable that one night after uh, Cicero broke up with her. She had a moment of weakness. She said that. She reached out to Georgie. You know, it seems like Dar Darcy was looking for some ego boost. It happened. You could say that wasn't kind to Georgie, but Georgie's a grown man. He could have figured it out for himself as well. I don't know. But then... All of, you know, because that happened, I don't have to respect anybody, says Florian. <laughs> because she slept with him weeks ago, then tough beans. You know, Before drama we follows rehearsal, us. We can do that. People like it and don't like it, basically. This is still going to be my best man. Let's just all have a good time. Let's all yeah. be cordial. Yeah, Stacy definitely knew about this, right? <laughs> she, she knew uh, at early. They had a f talk, Florian and Stacy. They already had a talk. So Darcy, at the very least, should be going to Stacy be like, so why didn't you tell me? Yes. I'll take one for the team. There's no need to take for the team. This is my best man. You don't need to sacrifice with nothing, well, basically. I definitely feel like Florian knew what he was doing, bringing this up at the last minute. So he knew we were all going to object and have to go forward and move forward. <laughs> so now Stacy's indicating that she didn't know. So, okay, if that's true, then I guess I commend Stacy for just sucking it up and saying, well, we're here. We might as well work with it. But uh, they clearly need more therapy. Imagine that. Imagine you are having your rehearsal dinner and the one person that you've clearly established and communicated prior that will not come and definitely won't be your best man is suddenly your best man. And Florian has this attitude of just like, suck it up. You know, what's wrong with you? You're Stop acting like the victim. Everything's fine. Yeah, uh, that would be extremely bothersome, right? Darcy talking, she's getting some messages on her phone. Yeah. And then this gentleman here mm -hmm. looks at her and he's like, hey. Who texts you, who is that? What are you talking to me like that for? Yeah. Your new boyfriend or something? Excuse me? She's single. She's not so with what? you. So what? That's not your. Yeah, Michael was being a good friend. He was being kind in that moment I, I there's a maybe a softer way he could have but that was late in the night when georgie had a lot of opportunities to pull back on the reins and it's an obvious thing to say that it would be weird that you would have to say it but he did in that moment michael's like she's single so back off she's not with you anymore and she's texting because georgie wasn't just asking who are you texting i'm just curious he was badgering he was escalating he was invading he was dominating and not okay. Girl anymore, buddy. So I'm gonna come over. Yeah, it's not. And it's say, hey man, let her live. Yeah. Like let it's her not, do her thing. It's not. And push come to shove. It, Who? I didn't push you. Yes, yeah, please do it. Listen, you don't need to push me. Yeah, Georgie took the opportunity, or got triggered, or was drunk, or had resentment, or something, and. Yeah, I didn't remember exactly how it worked out, but yeah, Georgie just starts to throttle him, and Michael's not doing anything. He's just standing with his hands to his side. Now, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it looks like he hit his hip hard on the floor, but we didn't hear him complain about that. So, no injuries, and not great and could be traumatic for someone. He did cry, Michael did cry afterwards, and I, I, I didn't really understand the full progression emotion-wise for him, but 
yeah, it makes sense that something like that would happen. Yeah, Georgie was c completely out of line, and Michael was completely in line. What teach the kids serious? What teach the kids? I'm clear. Just from being bullied. What do you want to fight to back up, or yeah, what? Stand up to, for yourself. Hi, right, to be mouthy back or what? Well, he's not like teaching boxing classes for him. <laughs> yeah, it don't look like a good match. Why do you say that? Okay, either Georgie tricked me for several seasons and was one particular kind of human, or he has an evil twin with short blonde hair, shorter hair, or they're shenanigans, or Georgie has facets that only reveal themselves in certain contexts. And there are other possibilities, but I don't understand. I don't get it. Everyone's kind of smirking. I, just, I don't know. It just... If this is real, it's absurd. If it's fake, it's absurd. I don't, I, so, okay, well, what do I say if this is real? If Darcy, you know, someone asked Darcy if she's dating someone, and she's like, yeah, and they start talking. And you could argue that Darcy might say, well, Georgie's right there. I, I don't really want to get into it. She could even just said that, hey, you know, Georgie's right here. We can talk th about this somewhere else. Now, Darcy is completely in her rights to talk in this way. She's not rubbing it in his face. She's just answering some questions. And you could argue Darcy's saying, look, he, I, I tried to be nice before, and if he's going to be here, then this is what's going to happen. If he wants to talk about who he's dating, then that's also fine. So that's uh, one way of looking at it. For Georgie, though, to, in this very childish way, <laughs> you know, because Darcy's talking about this guy like, oh, he helps kids with, uh, this guy I'm dating, he helps kids with, you know, that are bullied. And and then Florian and Georgie are like, what? What's the big deal? Who cares about that? That's dumb. And then Georgie's like, you're not a good match. Okay, shenanigans or Georgie is delusional with his own attachment problems, which doesn't seem likely. I mean, it's possible, you know, people are like that, but not in this way. Or Georgie is just an a-hole. I, I don't, Darcy's talking about the guy she's dating who helps kids in need, and you just say you're not a good match. <laughs> if it is shenanigans and I were the producer, I'd be like, Georgie, like, you gotta ramp up to it. Otherwise it looks stupid. Also, uh, you know, is, is there something else you can do like that'll cause some drama because it just looks so dumb? <laughs> he's, he's not a good match. And then if this is real, Georgie, what are you doing? Uh, and and I, I guess I, every time this, every time I see him, I'm thinking, well, now it's gonna be different because he'll return to the way he used to be for several years that we were watching him. And then this happens, I'm like, yeah, of course, it's probably not gonna happen. But maybe next season, then Georgie will, I don't know. I'm just saying. I was very rude. nice thing to say. Yeah. I'm just saying my opinion. I, I'm not allowed to say my opinion. I say how, how I Your feel. Your opinion is drama when it starts with other people. Zigzag. Exactly. You see, everyone's smirking. I don't usually do this, but every literally everyone's laughing. Florian's laughing. Michael's laughing. Darcy isn't laughing, but Stacy is laughing. You could argue it's because they're uncomfortable. Absolutely, that happens. You know, many, many years ago, I got to know how people will role play because in my classes, because we don't have clients there to practice on, we will have students role play as clients and then people will rotate in and out. And one of the common things that people will do when they are role playing and they're uncomfortable, you know, there are people who are comfortable with role playing and there are people who aren't. And there's, I guess, people in the middle, of course, but people who aren't comfortable with role playing, they will laugh, they will giggle because they're pretending and they're uncomfortable and there's a lot of people watching and they feel goofy and so they will laugh, they will smile. And I will have to work with students. So like if you're gonna give your fellow student a fair shot at an actual situation so that they can actually learn something in this class, you're gonna have to try. And I get it, <laughs> you're not a trained actor. It is awkward, it is weird, but the more you can get into it, if everyone gets into it, then everyone wins. So try to find that within you. At the very least, don't laugh because that'll really throw everything off. You know, Just stop talking or there's other things you can do that will look like a, an actual client. You know, sometimes clients shut down but clients don't usually burst into laughter in the middle of a session because uh, they're uncomfortable with acting <laughs> you know now of course people laugh in therapy but you get my point so i don't know if that's what i'm seeing but it it's in that direction 
it's there's a possibility that literally everyone at that table understands that this is faked and they're laughing because they can't help themselves <laughs> you know just imagine that you're not a trained actor no one in your family is a trained actor and the 15 of you are tasked with walking into a room and putting on a show there's going to be laughter <laughs> you're going to be a little goofy about it right so i don't know if that's what i'm saying it could all be real it could be totally real i can't tell but it's it's either ridiculous in a true way or it's ridiculous in a fake way. I don't know. What do you think? Zach. Zig Zag. Zach. I don't need to see him. I don't want to see him. He's coming tomorrow. You not want to see him. Oh God. Oh boy. I don't want to see Darcy being with another guy in this wedding because I'm not okay with that. You don't need to push this one in my face. Then go the fuck home. What are you doing there? Go home. What are you doing there? <laughs> Push in your face? Just go home. Just say, you know what? This was a bad idea. Bad on me. Sorry, Florian. I should have never agreed to come because I clearly have not recovered enough from the relationship to handle the situation. That's okay. A lot of people would be in that situation. Go home. You know, worrying about how you think you feel about if I'm bringing somebody or not. I care about you and that's why I don't bring that because I don't want to cause no drama and problems by bringing a date in the wedding. She doesn't give a sweetheart. It doesn't sound like she gives a You guys don't know something. So now he's gonna say that they had sex. It does, doesn't change a thing. If they had sex earlier in the day, that doesn't change a thing. If they had sex 10 times in the past week, it doesn't change a thing. Darcy is being clear. She doesn't wanna be with him and she can date other people. But what happened from what I think is a month ago-ish, she had a, a vulnerable moment and they reached out to each other and had sex. That's it. That doesn't give him the right to say, well, then I, I have ownership over here or her. She can't date other people. She can't bring other men around when I'm around. No, no. Party in New York. You're ignoring me. And that's the reason I'm upset, because me and Darcy, a couple weeks ago in Miami, we do something that we actually hook up in Miami. And we f What? Sex. You guys had sex? Is that true? That's give me hope to think that she still care about me. Okay, that's okay. You can have hope. Doesn't give you the right to be rapey with her and to invade and try to dominate. And when you showed up at the bachelorette party and Darcy clearly indicated that she wasn't interested, then that's all you need to know. It sucks. It hurts. Move on. It doesn't give you the right to invade and dominate and ruin the bachelorette party and the rehearsal dinner. <laughs> it doesn't give you that right. It just doesn't. And I'm worried that everyone at the table will be like, Darcy, wah wah, you did it again. Oh my God. And of course, all this plays into slut shaming and misogyny and sexism and victim blaming. <laughs> She's a victim. She, he, I mean, I don't know on the scale, but at the bachelorette party, and now he's being invasive and dominant and arguably abusive. It's certainly massive red flags. So just because she had one night where she was vulnerable. I apologize for you, okay? I'm so pissed off with Georgie. All he wants to do is sabotage my life, my opportunity with Zach. You know, word goes down the grapevine. Now that everyone knows at the table, I'm sure my dad's gonna hear about it, my kids are gonna hear about it. That's the last thing I want. I don't understand why Zach's even a part of the conversation. Darcy and Zach have had two extremely brief meetings, right? <laughs> this show, uh, you know, I guess there's different cultures uh, and different ideas about dating, but when she was dating Cicero, uh, you, I wouldn't even call that dating. I would call that, I mean, I've, I've compared this before that when you ha meet someone on Tinder and you meet up for coffee for 15 minutes just to kind of see them in 3D and see if you should move forward as a way of, because, you know, one of the big mistakes of online dating is that you meet someone on the dating app or something. Maybe you talk on the phone and then you're like, okay, let's go on a date. And you commit to like a four hour dinner date slash walk on the beach. 
And within the first three minutes, you think, oh, no, this is not going to work. Me and this person, uh, no, uh, get me out of here. Now I have to suffer through four hours and pay for a meal or whatever. So everyone who's been online dating has been through that. So it's prudent to maybe meet up a little bit in a more conducive. Now, there's a, there's a downside to that, that when you meet up in that way, it can lack romantic overtones and thus can make a meeting like that seem very businesslike and might limit sparks from happening. But the point is, is that with Darcy, she has had, in my book, two meetings with two different men along those lines. They did, they did not appear to be full-blown dates. I mean, maybe with Cicero, she hung out with him a little longer. She was in his car for a while. But they, I don't know, they just seem very service. But anyway, so Darcy is like, I don't want that getting back to Zach. How about you just go? Zach seems like he would be fine with it. <laughs> he seems like a very flexible guy, literally and figuratively, that you could just go to him and say, look, I was vulnerable this one night. My ex and I, I don't know, I got back together. It was, I was breaking up. Cicero had stood me up. I didn't know what to do. And I, I hooked up with an ex. I, yeah, I feel bad. And yeah, right, right. Because she met Zach after that point. <laughs> that was the whole thing. Cicero, she felt vulnerable, hook up with Georgie. And then Zach happens after that point, right? Because Zach couldn't have been overlapped with, yeah, I don't know. I just don't understand. Now, I, I think it's consistent with Darcy and a lot of people on these shows that they would be very concerned about that. And it's consistent that someone like Zach would be very concerned. But I don't know. He doesn't seem like the sort of guy of anyone on the show that I could imagine that would just be like, fine, that, that's totally fine. I, I could imagine Zach being fine with it. So I, I hope Darcy just tells him what happened. Where he stood us up and I, and I really haven't had good luck in dating. I tried matchmaking. I got stood up a couple times. And you knew this whole time. We fought I about know, the wedding. I know, I know. Georgie being in the Georgie, wedding. Georgie. And you were intimate with him and you let him back in. And but that's my- Yeah. Somehow I thought it wouldn't happen, but it is. It's happening right away. Stacey's like, so that negates the entire argument. It, it negates all of your wants and needs. Now, because you had sex with him two weeks ago, that means you can't assert yourself ever. That means, Darcy, all of your wishes and all of your boundaries are erased forevermore. You might as well just get married to Georgie now because he wants to be with you. You had sex with him one time. It's all your fault. I feel like you took a lot out on me and I feel a little betrayed. Darcy's been giving me and Florian about having Georgie in the wedding, but yet she can have sex with him. Okay. (laughs) I don't need to repeat myself. I've already said it. (laughs) I don't need to. I don't need to say it. At the wedding. Like, what the f***? Who else knew? Florian? You You knew? Yeah. You knew and you didn't tell me. I I keep it secret so Jody tell me not talking about it. How can I trust you? How can I? Who cares? Two consenting adults had sex a few weeks ago. Who cares? So it was a major disaster. Somehow it's your business. Somehow this is information that is critical to your life. It doesn't... No. Now, the way they're treating it, it's like Darcy behind the scenes has been carrying on a relationship with Georgie this entire time and saying a completely different thing to Georgie behind the scenes. Yeah, and if that were the case, then absolutely, this would all make sense. Stace would be completely justified. One night, <laughs> they got together, and Darcy, presumably, or at least the next time they had a chance to talk, she indicated, I'm moving on, I'm dating other people, I'm not with you, I don't want to do that again. Hey, tomorrow, I'm just what tired of the secrets, I'm, I'm tired of all the, the I don't, anger. I was scared, lonely, vulnerable. Okay, this is great that Darcy is actually going here. We could absolutely imagine other behavior from either one of them. Darcy could be like, well, you did this one thing this one time, or how dare you get angry, get hostile. Instead, she's going to her primary feelings, which I imagine was the real reason why she did what she did. And she's saying, I was vulnerable, I was scared, I was lonely, I didn't know what else to do, and I was desperate and I made a mistake. And I'm sorry, now, hopefully, once 
Stacy hears that, she will say, oh, okay. The happiest day of her life. And I don't want to feel like I was the catalyst to ruin her wedding. I need to figure something out. What happens? We just need to go to bed. I just I need to go home. You know what? I, I'm upset with you. You don't keep secrets from me. We talked about this at the counseling session. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Okay, we need to communicate more. We need to be Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, I hate to say this, but this is a bit of a vindication for me because while I was watching that meeting, it wasn't a counseling session. It was a meeting with an officiant. And I mean, I don't know his credentials, so they, they never present that. Uh, did we even get to know his full name so I could Google him or something? To because sometimes they will have a credential. Maybe he did. I don't know. But regardless, at the session, the meeting, Florian indicated that he totally understood and he apologized. And Florian, out of nowhere, just seemed to completely turn a new leaf, which I was surprised by. And this is after me yammering about how I thought that the meeting was not going to be very helpful and that typically people need years of therapy to turn around and Florian does it in seemingly three minutes. And at the time I thought, well, all's well that ends well, but did he really just change? He's using words that he changed. And then we repeatedly are now seeing <laughs> during the, the day before they were getting married, Florian being very dismissive, very uh, upsetting to, to me and to everyone in the family, bringing Georgie, tricking everyone, dismissing Stacy in this moment, and uh, yeah. On um, what I want, and I want you, and I follow my heart, and it's easy just to give up. It's easy to give up and walk away. That's easy just things to walk away and give up, but that's weakness. I don't want to be weak. I still love you. I just care about you, and I want to be weak. And I want to fight for you. And I'm going to fight for you. And I'm being fighting for you. Yikes. So in terms of how this show is being edited, and God knows what's really happening, but in terms of the way it's edited, this is the common refrain and excuse and motivation for abusive stalkers, which is arguably what he's been doing, at least on the spectrum. He's framing it as, I'm fighting for you. No, you're not, Georgie. You're fighting against her to coerce her into a relationship. You're fighting for yourself. You're fighting selfishly. You're not fighting for the relationship. It, and this is something to look for in terms of a differentiation between love bombing and abuse and actual healthy relationships. And some of you might struggle with the difference because of your early childhood having a lot of those things overlapping. When someone really loves you, and well, let's just take Georgie for example. If he were healthy about this, he would, in his heart, say, I really want her back, and I, and I do want to fight to get her back. But I also love her and respect her as a human being, as a person who has agency, as a person who has rights. And of course, I'm not going to invade her or bother her, but I do want to fight for the relationship. I do, I do believe in us, but I don't want to bother her. I don't want to put her out. I don't want to put her in a position where she feels pressured or she's uncomfortable. What do I do with that? And then we would see different sorts of behaviors. Maybe he would write a letter and say, you don't have to reply, but I just have to get, up, get this off my chest. Or he would show up at the wedding and fight for her by being cool so that maybe she would warm up to him or something like this. But that's not what he's doing. What he's doing is I'm fighting for us. I'm fighting for my love for you and I'm gonna dominate you and control you and invade your life. You're the best sister, you have the biggest heart, and there's no one else I'd rather go through life with. Love you. This past year has been so amazing. <laughs> Throughout the ups, the downs, the good, the bad, the ugly, the breakups, the makeups. Let's go, woo! Doing it big, baby! Yeah, when they do these montages, there's a lot that did happen in this season now that I'm seeing it. And yeah, okay, so that's the end of this season. Thanks for watching with me. I think that there were some shenanigans going on with some producer motivated or scripted storylines, but I can't tell, of course. I don't like it when people accuse every show of being fake. I, I tend not to do that. Uh, it's either that or the individuals on the show have extremely inconsistent behavior, which could be true. I can't tell. That's certainly possible given what we've seen. But, you know, it doesn't really matter. 
to this channel because I use it, you know, I use these shows as a jumping off point anyway. So it's just an opportunity to talk about other kinds of things in the clinical world and just in life. And yeah, let me know what you think in the comments, of course. I do read the comments and, and do take it to heart. And tune in next time when I continue watching this show because I'm just going to take a guess and say, because, you know, Darcy, her dating life has a lot of drama potential. Uh, will Georgie come back? That seems very likely as well. <laughs> so, I don't know. Tune in when we find out. And everyone, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.